right, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me. It's day three. I know I've had some great insights, a lot of fun here. I'm glad I thought, you know, three people show up at success. So thank you for joining me here this morning. My name is Dane Seville. I'm the co-founder and brand and public relations manager for Union Marketing. We're going to talk about a, co a guide to content planning for a better bottom line. So I want to define two things real quick before we sort of get into it. One, content, we're not just going to talk about words on a page or landing pages or ad content. Content is the message you want to deliver and the means, modes, and channels by which you communicate that message. And bottom line, I'm not always going to be talking about just saving money, but talking about how to optimize your spend. So it's not just saving money, but how to increase the potency of every dollar that you invest in your digital marketing plan. But first, you might be wondering, who is this guy? Why is he here talking to us today? I started my career as a high school English teacher, so I learned how to take complex concepts and parse them down for students. Networked my way into the Department of Defense, where I was a communications specialist, so I then took very complex concepts, parsed them down for adults. Then I left the government and went into the private sector. I worked for a 33-store automotive group in Raleigh, North Carolina, in the marketing department. Now, our marketing director, who at the time, who's now Reunion CEO, he wanted us to get practical insights about the dealership. How can you write for someone and to their customers if you don't know them? So we went out into the dealerships, went in the showroom on the lot, did test drives, went in F&I, went into the service base, talked to technicians. So we, we, we knew how things operated. We had actual practical insights. Well, after my tenure there, I then went to a, a global agency called Three Ships, which is now divided up into multiple companies where I own my copywriting chops. And then finally, it's called Reunion because we reunited to start this new company. Now there's also another reason why I'm also up here today is that I was a professional wrestler for 15 years, so I'm used to doing things that people find uncomfortable. Thankfully today, I ain't gotta wear spandex. And I ain't been working out lately, so it's even more fortunate for all of you that I don't have to. But you're not here to talk about wrestling history. We're gonna talk about why you've joined me. Number one, we're gonna talk about how to create an organic content plan based on search intent and user expectations. Again, search, we're not talking about Google and bots, we're talking about actual shoppers, their intent and what they expect when they click into your website. We're also gonna talk about a list of priorities for your Google My Business. This is a new gateway to your website. It's increasingly more important. So I'm gonna give you some things that you can do to make sure your GMB is optimized for search. We're gonna review two vital pieces of an effective paid search strategy. Responsive search ads we'll talk about and your quality score, which I hope your internal team or agency partner is talking to you about. Then we're going to talk about a, a, a applicable insights about programmatic media. That's like Pandora, video pre-roll, social media. So again, content is about the message and the channels that you use to deliver it. Why are we even talking about it? Well, NADA released the 2018 stats. 56.3% of an average dealer's spend is in what they call the internet. So more than half your budget is going into digital marketing. That's why we're going to talk about content for your digital assets. So we're going to focus on intent, because intent is the crux of your strategy. So we're going to focus on website, SEO and SEM, and social media. So we're going to focus, we're not going to worry about stimulating interest, we're going to talk about how to get people who have shown an intent to buy through a variety of signals that they've shown uh, through search. First, your website. It's the land of no competitors. This is where people cannot engage with other dealers. This is where you want to bring your shoppers. So you want to understand what people shop for and how. Be found where demand exists. So you want to show up in the right searches, searches that have intent modifiers like for sale, near me, things that show that they've done, they've done the research and now they're ready to actually make a purchase. So we're going to focus on those types of queries. Now there are two ways you can do that. One level is organic data. Now before you look at the data, you have to understand what are your business goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Historically, have you sold a certain model during this time of year and now the sales are down a little bit? Or do you wanna give an extra boost to a new model? What is it that you want to try to accomplish? And then you can understand how this data aligns with that. Is your agency working towards helping you accomplish your goals? There should be synergy there. So when you go into Google Search Console, it gives you organic data. What are the queries that are bringing people to your site from organic SERPs? So then you look at a few things. Your clicks. Is your CTR good? What's your average position? If you're trying to sell more Honda Civics and your Honda Civic search query and you have an average position of five, that's not good. 
So do the, does the average position and your click-through rate align with what your business goals are? So that's one level. That's what organically people, how people are getting to your site. Then there's a second level of data, which you could even argue is even more important, and that's your ad data, because that's where you're spending money. Again, do these search terms, do the queries coming to your site align with what your goals are? Do you have a good CTR for those search queries that align with your business goals? <clears throat> we know they are sunsetting the average position with, with search ads. We know that there's absolute top position, absolute top impression share, and top impression share, meaning absolute top means you're the cream of the crop. Like Randy Savage would say, ooh yeah, the cream always rises to the top. Do you get a high impression share for that? And then top impression share, that's all those ads that come above the organic SERPs. Are you getting the right impression share for the data that align with your business goals? There's all this synergy here. So then when you look at those two levels of data, you can pri prioritize your content strategy. From our dealer network, we know, we aggregated all the data. We have way more than the top 20 search terms. We, we, we limited it down. Top 20 search terms, the top five. So that means the, number of, the greatest number of searches are based on these, these keywords. So what's, what's the greatest search volume that's bringing people to our dealer sites? And they're based on these terms. Make. Brand, meaning like the name of your dealership. Geo one, state, so like city, state, and then the current model year. Those five are driving the most car shoppers to our dealer sites. So we know that we wanna create content, starting from VDPs to SRPs to what we'll talk about, we call model conversion pages. I'll show you some examples. Do you have the content that fills their journey? Are you satisfying their expectations? Then the, the, uh, the other top 20, Model 1, Dealership, Near, Me, Geo 2, Trim, Sale, Service, Lease. Do you have the content that satisfies the search demand? Be found where demand exists, and that's our demand. We also know, based on our dealer network, that searches are not big, long, exploratory searches. Searches that are bringing people to your website are not, what is the towing capacity of a 2019 Ford F-150? They're going to the manufacturer site. They got those beautiful little research pages. You don't have to worry about those searches. When they do 2019 Ford F-150 for sale, that's where you want to be. So we know based on this that we want to create content around these types of searches. And we do that. This is a model conversion page. And it does three things for your dealership. One, it helps you rank for those top searches. Two, it gives people a little like value props, a little bit more information. It reminds them why they were interested in the vehicle in the first place. And then third, and best of all, it puts eyes on inventory. We remove the friction with these model conversion pages. Remember, every click is an opportunity for them to bounce. With model conversion pages, they don't have to go anywhere. It's right, the inventory is right there. That's the whole purpose of your website, is to get eyes on inventory. Boom, Yahtzee, right there. So you hit those, look at, look at like the, head, the heading. 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan for sale in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Current model year, make, for sale was in the top 20, city and state. We're hitting those top five keywords because we knew from aggregating the data that's what we need to do. And then you put in little value props. 22 city, 29 highway miles per gallon. 73.5 cubic feet of max cargo space. We're giving the value props that we know based on how they searched and what they were searching for, that this was important to them. We know that. So you put it in there. And then lastly, like I said, boom, they can scroll through inventory. That's a content plan that creates a better bottom line because you're maximizing your digital strategy that you're investing in. When you do that also, when you understand the importance of geo, when you create these pages, when you're, when you're understanding how to target your audience, then you're also gonna pull people in from the right places. Then you're saying, wait a minute, Dane, sessions are down 13.22%. How is that a good thing? But now you have to dig a little bit deeper. Take a little closer look. This is a Chicago dealer. Chicago, sessions up 75%. Naperville, near Chicago, up 170%. Aurora, up 141%. New York City, what? Wait a minute, down 53%, that's a good thing. Sometimes things can be a false flag. Don't fall for it, look into the data, dig deeper. When you do that, you can dominate organic SERPs. The more 
SERPs that you can occupy, the more real estate you take up, the less opportunity people have to engage with your competitors. And it's possible to take up multiple spots in those SERPs. We know that the top clicks come in those top three spots, especially spot number one. So the more real estate you can occupy by fulfilling the search demand, be found where demand exists, you can accomplish this. Push your competitors down the page. Push third-party sites down the page. Bring them directly to your website, the land of no competitors. When they come to your site, you want to remove friction. You want a frictionless gateway. So your homepage, lots of people come to your homepage as the gateway to your website. You want to remove the friction. Before I show you the next slide, because there's, there's a lot of stuff on it, I want to talk to you about homepage banners. That's the next slide. But before we get there, here's why we're talking about it. You're saying, Dane, well, we're talking about a better bottom line. What's homepage banners have to do with that? When you understand really what happens on your homepage, what you can do is you can reallocate your internal team's time or your agency's time to do things that better align with your goals, to do things that actually create conversions, that actually benefit your dealership. We know that from our dealer network that only 6% of homepage home clicks go on banners. 6% of all homepage clicks go on banners. And half of that 6% are just on the first banner. By the time you get to the third, 0.86%. So three banners or fewer is optimal. And you're going to say, well, you know what? I remember a question I got one time. was like, what do I have to do if I'm mandated to have so many? Well, create some generic ones. Create some stock ones you can recycle. And then based on your specials or something that you really want to push forward, then create two to three unique ones. You don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Let your designers, let your copywriters, let your marketers do things that benefit you. I know banners are pretty, and I know they're tangible things that you get, and it's way it makes you feel good inside, but you know what? It's not helping your dealership sell cars. So here are some tips for home pages. Is there an inventory search widget installed? Is the navigation on your home page clean and easy to use? You don't want to have to have Magellan to be able to find their way to inventory. Are SRPs and schedule service buttons above the fold? Again, giving them actions to take without having to scroll. Are there too many pop-ups? Are your phone number and directions easy to find in the header? And then be the shopper. Across all devices, submit a form, engage in chat, click to call, be a, be a mystery shopper for yourself, but then also do it across devices. Okay, so you, 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 know, you look at and you, you do a chat from your, from your laptop. That doesn't necessarily mean that chat's going to engage on your mobile, right? Sometimes things happen. It's software. So do it across devices. Pick up a tablet, get out your phone, and do all those different actions on different forms different forms of communication. Google My Business is the new gateway to your website. Google My Business is more important than ever. And here's why. Look at all the things that people can do and all the information they can get about your dealership right there from the SERPs. Dealership name and review count. Engagement options. Get directions. Come to your website. Ants Q&A. So there are people coming to GMB to ask you questions. Citations. Now, here's an important point about citations. So that's like your phone number, your address. Make sure it's consistent, meaning make sure it aligns with your website. So if on your website you have, you're, let's say you're at 400 West Boulevard, and you spell out West, on your GMB, don't do W dot, do West. Make sure it's consistent and aligns with your site. Consistency is key with citations. Reviews from other directories, popular times, time on, uh, on the lot expectations, dealership posts. There's so much they can do from Google My Business. And one of the important things is photos. Don't do this. People want to see what they're coming into. You're delivering on expectation. When they open up photos, they want to see your staff. They want to see your lot. They want to see your showroom, your business center. Show that to them. Deliver on their expectations. Fulfill that. And when you do that, they're more likely to come to your site and look at your inventory. This shows me nothing. In fact, these are places I would not go to. 
Those do not look like great places to be, but these look like great places to be. This gives me some insights on what I'm going to see when I come to that dealership. Visuals are compelling, so be compelling. Example questions from our dealer network. So people are coming to GMB and asking questions of dealers. Do you sell used cars? Take trade-ins. Can I have my oil change? Can I buy if I have bad credit or no credit? There are questions that people are asking. Search Engine Land did a study. Would you like to know what percentage of businesses don't answer questions on GMB? Just give me a number, anyone. What percentage do you think don't answer questions on GMB? 90%. 90%. You're allowing Debbie McFadden, local guide, to control the narrative of your business. Why are you letting other people control the, the, the reputation of your dealership? Take control back of the narrative about your business. Be found where demand exists, and here is the demand. And you don't have to understand coding or any, you just have to go on your Google My Business and answer it. Be found where demand exists, and we know demand is here because you might get answers like this one. This was based on a mailer where people had to peel things up and so someone wrote, so three in a row, diagonal is a winner? In tic-tac-toe it is, great. Thanks, Lisa. Not really helpful for my dealership, but all right. Here are your priorities. Here's what you need to do now if you haven't done it yet with Google My Business. First, make sure your categories are updated. You're not just a car dealer. If you're a Honda dealer, you're a Honda dealer. If you're a Toyota dealer, you're a Toyota dealer. Two, ensure citations are consistent. So we already talked about that phone number, name, address. Make sure that's consistent and aligns with what's on your website. Write your business description. You have 750 characters. The first 250 are like a newspaper lead. Put the most compelling information up front. Audit your photos and videos. Don't be that shady little dealership with busted up windows. Create service and parts GMB listings. You want to have separate listings for service and parts. And then within that, there are categories you can choose to make it relevant to consumers and be found where demand exists when they want to understand where they can get an oil change or where they can find Honda parts. So car repair, maintenance, auto parts store, there's some other categories, there's just two examples that um, dealers should use. And then name it. So if you're Toyota dealer, Toyota, Toyota service dash your dealership's name. That's the ideal optimized naming convention for your service and parts uh, listings. Bonus tips, again, make sure you review your FAQs, your, your questions on the GMB, and then ongoing maintenance is your best play. Like all things in digital marketing, it's not set it and forget it. This is a continual thing. You need to continually look, create content, answer questions, so continue, add photos, add videos, continual maintenance will help keep it fresh and relevant because that's what Google wants. That's what search engines want. Freshness, relevance. <clears throat> Is your paid search built to win? So that means understanding not just where we're at now with paid search, but where things are going and where things are going very quickly. And number one, that's responsive search ads. Responsive search ads, what people see when they do a search, what they see are three headlines and two 90 character descriptions. But that's not the important part necessarily. I mean, you want to write great headlines and great descriptions. But there's a new thing about response, well, not a new thing about responsive search ads, a new thing's about paid search, which is RSAs. Now, expanded text ads will have three headlines and two descriptions, but expanded text ads are not responsive search ads. Responsive search ads essentially respond to the consumer search. So machine learning from Google, so let me kind of restart. What you'll do is you're gonna write 15 headlines and four descriptions for every single paid search ad. Oh my goodness, that's 43,680 combinations. All right, I like it. Google responds to the search and selects from those 15 headlines and those four descriptions to best align with consumer intent. 
Google's machine learning, actual AI goes, all right, this combination is gonna optimize the click-through rate for this ad. So if you don't have those 15 headlines and four descriptions written for every single ad, you're behind the curve already. Now yes, there, are, there have to be some automations to make sure you can write 15 headlines and four descriptions for what you should have, hundreds of ads. So there's a certain level of automation, but then you still need to have the human element as oversight to control it, to optimize it. So don't rely fully on automation, that's BS. There always needs to be a certain level of human contact with your content in every single channel that you have. So, for example, the Q3 for sale, that first uh, responsive search ad. So Audi Q3 for sale, and I've just put in different geos. This first one is a great responsive search ad. Q3, Q3, Q3 for sale, Audi Q3, 2019 Q3's for sale here, again, Remember when we talked about those high priority keywords when we aggregated all of our data? For sale in the top 20, the model in the top 20, the current model year in the top five, the make in the top five, location in the top five. We're hitting those, we're being found where demand exists. So all that's relevant, Audi Q3 for sale, all that's relevant. Look at the, the URL, the vanity URL we have up here, continentalaudi.com slash Q3 slash for sale directly matches the search. Discover your Audi Q3 for sale. Continental Audi showroom, Naperville, Illinois. Visit Continental Audi, Naperville. Premium lease deals and financing. If they're looking for sale, what do they want? They want to lease it or they want to finance it. So it's language that matches the intent of the search. Satisfy search intent and deliver on those expectations so whenever they click through from your ad, look at the links here. Q3 Premium Plus package. Research Audi SUVs. New Q3 SUVs tech packages. When they click those links, they're gonna land on a page that satisfies their expectations. And when you do that, I guarantee you, you're gonna see conversions rise. Look at these other ones. Audi Q3 for sale, use Q3 listing. Scheduled test drive, Swickley PA. If you are inventory of a Audi Q3 models today, home page, contact us, directions. Why are you not linking them to inventory? You're creating friction. What, they're gonna click through to your homepage, then they have to click on the search widget or go to the model conversion page, then they go to the SRPs, then they get to the VDP. Why'd you do that? Why'd you not just kind of take them to exactly what they're looking for? I love this last one though. Used Audi Q3 models in stock now, blah, 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 blah. New 2017 A4, all right, I want a Q3. New 2017 A4. Satisfy the search intent in everything that you do. Quality score, if you're not talking about it, if your agency isn't talking about it, if your internal team isn't talking about it, they start, better start talking about it. Quality score directly affects your bid price. So your rank, your ad position, where you fall, whether it's that top absolute or that top impression share, is your ad position is affected by quality score. So your ad rank, your ad position is your quality score times your bid price. So for example, dealership A has a quality score of three and dealership B has a quality score of six. Dealership A has to spend twice as much, has to bid twice as much to compete with dealership B. That bears repeating. A quality score of three has to bid twice as much as a quality score of six. What are your quality scores? That's a content plan for a better bottom line because you're optimizing your spend. And that, your quality score is based on five factors. Number one is click-through rate. Of course, keyword relevance. So make sure you have enough ad groups based on you know, search intent. So you should have dozens of ad groups and hundreds of keywords within that to satisfy all those different levels of searches. Landing page quality and relevance. So when they, again, when they click through and they land on that landing page, it needs to be relevant to what the search was that brought them there in the first place. Ad text relevance. So is the ad, like we just saw in, that previous, in those three examples, is the ad text relevant to the search? And last is your, is your historical account performance. But guess what, there's some synergy here. Because when you have keyword relevance and you have landing page relevance and you have ad text relevance, guess what goes up? Your click-through rate. And when your click-through rate goes up, which is the top indicator of, of what, what, will ri what will raise your quality score, then your ad, ads account historically performs better. So it's all synergistic. It all works together. So that's why we call it double whammy. 
So you will then rank in the top of paid search, and then you have your organic rankings. So you take up the top two, three, four spots on organic, and guess what? Look at all that real estate in that SERPs that you are occupying. You're giving people fewer opportunities to engage with your competitors. You're occupying more real estate. That's a content plan for a better bottom line. Because you are optimizing your investment in digital marketing by doing the right strategies in the right places. Are you leveraging programmatic media? So before I really get into that, we want to talk about programmatic is. So again, programmatic is like Pandora, video pre-roll, social media. There, it, it's automation to help optimize your bidding, okay? So programmatic can target better than traditional. So traditional being like television, new, newspapers, so on and so forth. Television and traditional media is, is, is limited to demographic and ge geographic targeting, and not very good geographic targeting either. Programmatic cover goes well beyond that. I'm going to take a sip of water before I dive into this big, long, bad boy. So you have your demographic targeting, your geographic targeting, which is way more granular than traditional. You can choose specific zip codes or towns, communities. You can be very granular and specific in how you target, which you can't do in traditional. But then it goes beyond that. There's also behavioral and contextual signals that can help you target your audience better. You can understand specifically who it is you're trying to reach. Behavioral signals are, and you can get this information, it's available. What websites visited, their search history, lifestyles, online habits, what are their affinities and their interests, what things do they have an inclination to look for, engage with, interactions with your website, any life events that happened, what are they saying on social media, and then there's even look-alike audiences. So you can, you can define your audience, and in channels like social media, you can create a look-alike. So that means it's a whole other set of buyers, but who are exactly like the people you targeted. And then contextual. Their search queries and, search queries and keywords. What was, their, what was their intent? Be found where demand exists. So you can use all of these to find your customer, not just any customer. I used to talk about indexing when I would kind of, you know, dive more into traditional versus uh, uh, programmatic. But before I show you the next slide, I just kind of want to give you some context as to why we're talking about it. So with traditional media, with like television, you know, you'd, you'd uh, look at and negotiate with different stations. Let's just say your local NBC affiliate. Now, when you run a, an ad with your local NBC affiliate, their reach is a lot larger than what your primary marketing area is. It goes well beyond your area of responsibility. Sometimes cities, towns, even counties away where people are not going to come to your dealership. There are also people who are not fitting into your demographics. But guess what? When you run a TV commercial, you're not just paying for those people within your primary marketing area or your demographics. You have to pay for everyone who can turn on the TV and go to that station. There's a lot of waste in there. So now we can move on to this. this. Here's just a hypothetical. Let's say you went with the NBC affiliate and they can reach one million people. So one million people can turn on the TV and go to the, go to the NBC affiliate channel, station. You run your television ad, it comes out to be $15 cost per thousand impressions. But that's not the end of the story of your cost per thousand impressions. We need to account for the waste. So let's say of those million people, 350,000 are outside of your primary marketing area. Okay, again, again, TV commercials can reach counties away. So there are 350,000 people outside of your target market. Then there's another 400,000 people that aren't your demographics, don't match who you wanted to try to target. So that's 750,000 people who you're paying to deliver an ad to that aren't going to come by because they're not your audience. So that cost, that $15 cost per thousand impressions is actually the cost per net target audience impressions, the cost to reach the, your buyers is $60 because you have to account for all of that waste. Now we know that people see between 5,000 and 10,000 ads per month. The more frequently you can deliver your message to buyers, the better, because then it's greater recall. The more they see it, the more they'll remember you. Well, to increase your frequency in, in traditional media, you need to spend more money. That's not a content plan for a better bottom line if you gotta spend more dollars. Versus video pre-roll. Video pre-roll used our contextual, behavioral, demographic, geographic targeting. We looked at all those different signals and we targeted 300,000 people. 
those 300,000 people are our actual buyers. So when we run our ad and it comes out to be cost, $15 cost per thousand impressions, there's no waste to account for because we specifically targeted exactly who our buyer is. So when your ad is done running, your cost per net target audience impressions, the cost to reach your actual buyers is still $15 because not a single person who saw that ad is not your buyer. And the best thing about programmatic, if you wanna increase your frequency, you just have to target better. You don't need to spend more money. That's a content plan for a better bottom line. You can increase your frequency exponentially just by targeting better. It's a much smarter strategy than traditional media. So then you can create ads through all channels like social media to target specifically who they are. So you create, you'd use the creative, the images, you use your headlines, your copywriters to write the headlines and write the ad text that directly aligns with who, who these buyers are. So these are, again, hypotheticals. But let's say we looked at all of our data. Let's say you dove into Search Console and Google ad data and you, and you looked at all those contextual and behavioral signals and you know that a Toyota Corolla <clears throat> you know the Toyota Corolla, the person that's buying that, the person that's coming to our dealer site is a young college graduate. Well, then you create an ad tailored to that person because you know specifically who they were based on all those behavioral and contextual signals. So college graduates, perfect vehicle, new 2019 Toyota Corolla, big life events deserve big rewards. Or if we know that Ram buyers are entrepreneurs, drive your business in a new Ram, whether you're building an overpass or business, or if we know that Chevy Traverse are, are uh, you know, mothers or fathers with families. Do it all with this 2019 Chevy Traverse. Ever wish you had an extra hand? So your creative and your text aligns with who that person is. So you, you understand that audience. You sort of built that persona to know who they are, to specifically target them and create something that resonates with them, that matters to them. When you target better, you get better results. Again, a content plan for a better bottom line. So we know from our dealership network, this, so we're out of the hypotheticals and we're back into actual data from our dealer network. When we run Facebook ads with highly targeted data, and then we also use a clean CRM data. You can use your, your CRM can help power your, your social media. We know that when we run strategic Facebook ads and use our CRM data, we have a 38.2% bounce rate more than a minute time on site. Compare that to poorly constructed social media ads or other stimulus channels, 90% plus bounce rate in 10 seconds or fewer. You're getting greater engagement when you are specific. And then for your better bottom line, these are three stores pulled from our dealer network. We have the cost per click, so the cost it takes to get someone to click through from your ad to your site, and the CTR, so what is the rate at which they click through on that ad. So when we run strategic Facebook ads based on all those different signals we can use, we see CPC of 21 cents. So 21 cents cost per click to get people to, to, to click through the ad. 29 cents, 33 cents. CTR of 1.53, 2.23, 2.13. Let's take the worst of those metrics. So let's look at CPC first. The worst metric here is 33 cents cost per click. Compare that to the automotive dealership industry average of $2.24. Are you wasting dollars on ads that are not delivering for you because things aren't being targeted well enough. CTR, let's look at the worst, 1.53%. The industry average, 0.8%. Greater click-through rates, lower CPCs. That's a content plan for a better bottom line because it's specifically here, clearly, saving you dollars and extending, maximizing the potency of every dollar you spend in your digital marketing efforts. So be found where demand exists and then deliver on the expectations they had when they click through your paid search ads, when they click through social media, when they engage with video pre-roll, send them where they want to go. Remove the friction. So takeaways today. Search Console and Google Ad Data helps you understand search, search demand and create a plan to satisfy it. Your homepage is a primary gateway to your inventory, so don't create friction for consumers. Streamline their ability to get to where they need to go. <clears throat> Google My Business is important, so be sure to have a high quality, be sure to have high quality content across it. Responsive search ads are here. It's vital you're ready for them. Again, I cannot impress upon how important it is to, to, to be at the forefront of this. 
because they're already in the wild. They're already being seen. Don't fall behind the curve. Quality score helps drive down bids while keeping you competitive. Your quality score is going to help not just in many cases save you money, but in all cases maximize your money. And programmatic media helps you find your customers. And here's another note about programmatic media. When you prepare today for programmatic, you're preparing tomorrow for where television is going. AMC Premier, HBO Now, Hulu, Netflix. That is where television is heading. So when you prepare for today, you're investing in your tomorrow. You're preparing for where content is going. Content, the message you want to deliver and the means, modes, and channels by which you deliver it. And by programmatic, you're preparing for where content will go with new channels. So I knew day three. I might go a little bit uh, shorter because I didn't want to go at length because I wanted to value your time because I know you've been here for three full days. It's been two long days before. So I was like, you know what? I have a, a pension to be long-winded, so I try to keep it as short as possible. So I hope that was a good thing for you and not necessarily a bad thing for you because it's good for me. I know that. If you, uh, well, so any questions before I close it out? Any questions? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on the model conversion pages, um, how much content do you put on the page? So the question was, of, for model conversion pages, what is the typical t content you put in there? So there was a question earlier about, like, you know, how many words should I have on a page? It's going gonna, it's gonna to vary. So, so model conversion pages, the intent is just to give them a little bit of content, like remind them why they were interested in the vehicle, give them the value props, give them a little bit of savvy copy that's fun to read. But don't, don't inundate them with, with, with verbiage, because what they want to do is they want to look at inventory. So you're, you're using it to show them some visuals of the vehicle, give them a little bit of why they were interested in purchasing in the first place, and then you're, that way, when you keep it shorter, you're also letting inventory stay above the fold. And then, um, my next So how long would it take to go from a quality score of one? Like, what would be the time to take? I'm, I'm really not sure. I, I don't want to promise you anything. It's going to vary. It's going to depend on you know, how quickly you, 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 you restructure your, your account and uh, how well you, you know, write the ads. I mean, it's, it's going to be so many variables. So I don't, I don't want to yeah. over-promise and under-deliver on that. Yeah, you know, the more data available, you know, the better, the more we can understand um, who our consumers are, the better. And, and you could just aggregate everything. Just use all your sources of data and aggregate it to, ha to have a better understanding of, of who they are and what they're searching for and how. And the foundation really is that, that search console and Google ad data. Really focusing on what they're looking for and, and how they're looking for it is sort of the foundation. And then you can use that other data to sort of supplement that to better create and tailor your, your content. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. So, so bounce rates can be a false flag. So, like you know, if you look at like VDPs, you have a, like a high bounce rate on a VDP. That might, that, it's not necessarily a bad thing because what you did was, if you got them to the VDP, what was the whole purpose? Was to look at the VDP. So, if they don't necessarily engage and like you know call or you know <laughs> you know get their e price or whatever, it's not necessarily a bad thing because you delivered on their expectations. You satisfied the intent. I'm sorry. It's going to vary depending on what, what, what the search was and sort of what the intent was based on that, that query data. So I don't want to say one or the other. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to vary. Yes, sir. On your SRPs, are you uh, ones, dealer sites in hard coding? Are you duplicating those landing pages and, and adding the, the content with the SRP just because they, they seem to, to frown upon adding all the additional content to that? Yes. We do. Okay. Yes, sir. So if you have a third party firm managing a lot of this for you, yeah. what top two or three things as dealers do we need to monitor each month from a technical perspective to make sure we're getting good service and they're paying attention to this? So are you talking about managing like everything in digital marketing or everything. so could you um, so could you repeat the question for me real quick? I'm sorry. What are the top two or three things if I'm gonna double check, do my homework and make sure that they're providing a, a, a 
good level of service. What are the top two or three things that I need to be looking at, either within AdWords or analytics? So again, that goes back to that, that average position for organic data and search console. Understanding, are they, are they fulfilling their obligation to you by aligning their efforts to your business goals? So search console data, organic. So make sure your organic is, is vital. Secondly would be looking in your, your ad data and looking at the, those impression shares, top, absolute top and top impression shares, again, that align with your business goals. Because the higher that percentage, the higher that impression share, the more you're occupying those top spots in, in paid SERPs. And then looking at your quality score. So those are some easy things to look at. So you're not, you don't have to dig too deep. So if you just go in there, find your quality score of your ads, look at that impression share that you have, make sure that aligns with what you're trying to accomplish. And then third would be, I mean, since we're talking about focusing on intent, you know, we, we want bottom of the funnel uh, sort of searches. Um, I would say then the last thing would be to even just Google different searches and see, you know, if your ads are appearing, if it's showing up as three headlines, two descriptions, and then. I would say ask your agency, like follow, closely follow just digital marketing trends. And I don't want to say like, I shouldn't say trends. Follow new updates to like Google algorithms and different things that they're doing. And then ask your agency, hey, you know, what are we doing about this? So, so the organic data, the um, quality score and impression share, and ask questions. Anything else? All right, well, you can connect with me, uh, Dane at ReunionMarketing.com or Twitter at Seville Reunion. Hashtag word dude, hit me up. I'm happy to answer any questions at any time. Thank you very much for coming out this morning. I really appreciate it.